Hey everybody, this is Derek Christian with Cleaning Business Today, and today I am going to be doing something a little bit different. We are doing a, a live stream with uh, Dr. Charles Gerba, and he is an expert in, in indoor places where you live. He's a professor of environmental microbiology at the University of Arizona. He's authored over 400 articles, including several textbooks on environmental microbiology. He conducts research in this area. And we're going to be talking about ways you can use uh, the Ladybug Professional Dry Vapor Steam System uh, to actually make more money in your business because the science is great and Dr. Gerber is going to give us a lot of the science and I'm going to help kind of bring that down to what does that mean to your customers and how do you, do you make your customers care. So the public knows Dr. Gerber best for his crusading on the behalf of household hygiene. He's been on Good Morning America, Today, Dateline, and been quoted in all sorts of newspapers and magazines. So welcome, Dr. Gerber. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Can you give us a little bit of background? I tried to give the 10-second version, but I'm sure you can give your bio better than I can. Uh, yeah, well, I hear a lot of interest in how germs spread in the indoor environment is one of our topics uh, that we, we look at a lot because lifestyle has changed so much. You know, today... We spend 90% of our time indoors, and we try to understand how germs spread in this type of new environment from one individual to another. Most people don't realize how important surfaces are in, in the spread of germs, and that's what we really try to emphasize and study, how important and what we can do about it to prevent germ spread in the indoor environment. Great. Um well, like I said, we're going to try to get into the business side of things today and talk about things like efficiency and things like that. But before we get into some of the details, I want to talk a little bit about the technology we're talking about. Um, so the dry vapor team technology, um, which is used in the ladybug system, is a lot different than the things that maybe we're used to in the home environment. You and I talked a little bit about this before it starts. But can you talk about the difference of a system that maybe you would buy in retail versus this type of system? Well, this system is really designed uh, to, to help uh, reduce the number of uh, microorganisms, which may be a problem and can spread in the household. And also, it can reduce the number of allergens in it. It's basically a non-chemical system based on steam vapor, particularly designed uh, to kill uh, microorganisms that can be a problem in the indoor environment and spread from one person to another. Now, you mentioned the indoor environment. Why is that really important to think about? You were talking a little bit about this earlier with me on how important this is. Well, most people don't realize like the common cold and other illnesses you get in the household are transmitted by, by surfaces. They play a major role uh, uh, in terms of movement of microorganisms in the home, for, and even in the office. For example, uh, we've found if we... If a person comes in with a virus and puts it on a doorknob to an office building, within four hours, it'll be on half of the surfaces in that office building and half of the people's hands. So surfaces are playing a major role in how well disease spread. And that's true in the home, too. A child comes in with a virus in the home, within just four hours, again, 90% of the surfaces in the home will have the virus and everybody will have it uh, on their hands. So uh, it, this type of technology has the advantages of uh, reducing the number of microorganisms on these key surfaces uh, in a very simple manner. And now um, the dry vapor technology can kill the germs in as little as two to seven seconds. Where I used to work for some of the big chemical manufacturers and our products typically took two to 10 minutes to kill germs. Can you explain how the technology works and how they get that type of quick kill claim? Yeah, it's really based on, on steam, uh, you know, and heat really are doing the killing here. Uh, and it really denatures the proteins of the microorganism, uh, killing them basically. So it, it's very rapid. In fact, that, that's how using similar technology, how we actually uh, sterilize and sanitize surfaces in our own laboratory and our equipment, actually, to be honest. Uh, the, the one people have to realize that most chemical disinfections take time to act, and many of them are somewhere around 10 minutes, some of the most popular ones. Others even require maybe as low as 30 seconds, but they still require time. And I think that's one of the things people forget, particularly with commonly used disinfectants, uh, is the, the kill dwell time you need. Uh, and this helps alleviate that time. We find, at least in our studies in households and facilities, people just don't wait long enough for the disinfectant to act. So that overcomes that behavioral trait because it's so rapid kill. Yeah, you don't have to actually leave it on all that time to get the germ kill. Now, you also 
um, have mentioned before that there's a problem with the cleaning cloth sometimes. Yeah, one of the problems with cleaning cloths with chemical disinfectants, uh, uh, one, they can spread germs from one location to another. It's really, sometimes it looks like from what we've seen, cleaning cloths play a major role in mops and other cleaning tools in the spread of germs from one location to another when people are cleaning, much more than people recognize. Uh, secondly, um, that the, the disinfectants, the chemical disinfectants will react with the cleaning cloth material. Like the bleach will combine with the organic matter in the cleaning cloth, the cleaning cloth itself. So the efficacy of that chemical disinfectant decreases over time that you're actually doing it. So it's important to remember that. Uh, you don't have that same issue when you're using dry steam vapor. Um, but you should recognize the difference. And you should really watch your cleaning tools at all times, uh, no matter what. All right. Now, uh, you were mentioning also earlier that uh, we spend a tremendous amount of time inside the house now versus in the past. So can you get a little bit into that and why it's so important to make sure it's clean and sterilized? Yeah, and, 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 and I mean, you use the word not sterilized, but let's yeah, say, say that. Yeah. you don't have to kill everything. You know, it's like anything, it's targeted cleaning and disinfecting. Those high touch areas where you touch all the time are really the germ transport point in the home. And, and today, uh, we spend more time, like I said, than any generation in history. So we're really, in a way, our environment is more germy today in, in the home. And the other issue is that we're in larger buildings. We have larger cruise ships. Uh, we have larger football stadiums. So we're actually coming in contact with more surfaces that more people have touched than any generation in history. So in a way, your exposure is much more rapid it was than 100 years ago to other people's germs. Let's take the example of a farmer 100 years ago. He went into town once a week and went into two or three small stores in a country town. Does it happen today? Today, you're going to a, a, a large uh, a store where thousands of people are in the store at the same time. So it becomes much more fluid for germs to move from one facility to another, from one person to another. Much more people realize that's why we see new germs spreading so rapidly around the world. It's uh, often said that uh, a, a new emerging pathogen can uh, travel anywhere in the world in 24 hours today. So <laughs> big difference. A lot more exposure than most people realize. So sometimes it's really hard to make your average consumer understand why this is so important. Um, one of the ideas we wanted to talk about that we thought there was an opportunity around is to sell a, a cold and flu fighting cleaning idea. Obviously, flu season, we are coming out of it now. It goes all the way into May, but it's still sort of flu season. And when those viruses are going through the house, that's when people for the first time start to really think about um, how important it is to kill it where it's at. So, and we can talk about when you use dry vapor uh, cleaning technology, that unlike everyone else, we can actually kill the germs and do it quickly without chemicals. Um, Dr. Gerber, what's your opinion of something like that? Well, one of the things, advantage is broad spectrum. It kills viruses, bacteria, uh, and spores very well. Not all the common household disinfectants will do those equally, too. So that's an advantage of the broad spectrum of germs that you can actually kill with the product. Uh, the other thing is recognizing how colds and flu spread. You, you get the common cold actually by getting it on your finger and bringing your fingers to your nose, mouth, and eyes. That's how you get the common cold 95% of the time. That's the way. So it's it's what you touch that becomes uh, really important. And you're doing you you know just to give you an idea, you're touching your face about 16 times per hour. An adult, as a child, you're doing it as many as 50 times per hour. Believe it or not. So it really plays a mo major role. And people, parents, particularly in the home, should be aware of how important surfaces are in the spread of a virus from one individual to another. Why it's so important uh, to keep the levels of these organisms. Uh, to uh, a level that is not important in the transmission of infectious disease. You know, you don't have to sterilize the household, get those high touch points, and that's why it's so important. When you talk about the high touch points, a lot of them are things like doorknobs, light switch plates, that are vertical surfaces. Spraying a chemical on there and getting it to stay for two to ten minutes is a little bit tricky. So what are some of the advantages of the steam vapor on the vertical surfaces? 
Well, you can treat the vertical surfaces just as effectively as any horizontal or flat surface. Uh, yeah, chemicals are a little bit more difficult. One of the problems people will do is they'll spray it and it tends to run. Uh, and, and they spray and wipe quickly on, on, on a vertical surface and it's not enough dwell time for the disinfectant to be effective. Spray and wipe, as I call it, is not as effective as like steam vapor because one, uh, you got to wait long enough. Uh, you you got to wipe it up. Uh, and then the, the cleaning cloth in itself may uh, inhibit the action of the disinfection. They won't work as effectively. Now, what about fabrics? You know, when my son's sick, he's five, he sits on the couch and watches TV all day. And it just hit me the other day that I tried to disinfect the house, but I don't do anything about the couch that he's on. Can fabrics hold in uh, the viruses like that? Uh, yes, they can. Fabrics are actually kind of important, and they're very difficult uh, to disinfect. We've seen outbreaks, uh, for example, in firehouses of MRSA, a skin infection, uh, by the organism getting into the cloth couches. And you can't effectively kill those with chemical disinfectants. You know, it's kind of interesting. We've done studies where we put the virus in a couch and have people sit on the couch. And, and then what we found, it creates the viruses will spread all over the individual. You create a cloud of viruses when you flop down on a couch, believe it or not. And about speed vapor is about one of the few technologies you can actually use to kill the organisms in cloth materials. Uh, there's issues with uh, getting into drapes and cloth materials of, of microorganisms. And so it can become a, a real issue. But this is one of the ways you can get around that uh, technology. I think it's also important, like, look, Let's take drapes, for example, where allergens could build up. So it's another way you can reduce your exposure to allergens is by using a, a steam vapor. Well, in another area where it comes up, and this isn't necessarily cold and flu season, but when my son gets on the road, uh, our, dent, our doctor always tells us to throw up the toothbrushes. And we use electric toothbrushes, so that gets a little bit expensive. So can you steam something like a toothbrush and have it achieve the same ends? I, I probably you probably could. I haven't ever done, said I've ever done it, but it's a possibility uh, to to do that. Um, yeah. Well, if nothing else, you should change the head of your disinfect the the toothbrush every once in a while too. Uh, oh, yeah. That's a good idea. At least dentists recommend that. Uh, the other thing we always recommend: make sure you keep your toothbrush at least three feet away from a toilet because when you flush a toilet, you get droplets ejected. So you don't want to be brushing your teeth if it was in the toilet. So three feet away, we learned, is a good thing to do. So that's sort of the first idea to actually get the customers to care about um, is to talk about the cold and flu. You can talk about how you can stop the spread, um, how we can hit those high touch surfaces um, with the dry vapor. I've never really thought of the fabrics. And like I said, now that I think about my son sick on the couch and that when I sit down, I'm shooting a cloud of viruses in the air. That's a little terrifying. Um, and then just the fact we can kill it so quickly. Um, you know, when you invest in this type of uh, instrument, I'll be honest, it's not the cheapest thing in the world. So to be able to explain to your customer that you can do this type of cleaning and maybe charge a $250 flu or cold would really help pay for that type of equipment. The second thing you actually touched on a little bit already, which is selling add-ons um, with this type of technology. Another thing that we see a lot of is steaming the mattresses. Um, this can kill dust mites, which is really important because my son's got really bad allergies. Um, but once again, when, when you've got that type of illness, I imagine trying to uh, get the virus out of the mattress is a big deal too. Uh, yeah, no, it is. Uh, really, I think it gives you an opportunity to – uh, actually uh, reduce the number of allergens and microbes that could uh, potentially cause uh, illness. Uh, so in a way, it, it expands the range of uh, places you can actually uh, make a difference in reducing your exposure to allergens or organisms that could make you ill. Well, and I really love the idea when it comes to the bed, too, because sometimes when you talk about chemical disinfectants, people don't mind you using uh, a chemical somewhere in the house. But when you suggest that you're going to spray their bed with the chemical um, and they're, they're going to lay in it all night, they get really uncomfortable with that idea. So I think. Go ahead. I was going to add too. usually a lot of the chemical disinfectants won't work on cloth materials. Well, if you spray it on it. So besides getting everything wet, which is not a good idea, uh, they're not really as effective as something like steam vapor. Yeah, and uh, another thing we've talked about as an add-on potentially is children's toys. Um, this comes up from time to time uh, where we're cleaning for someone and they've got young children. And as you know, especially really young kids put everything in their mouth and they ask us to clean the toys. And that can get a little uncomfortable because of the chemical residue left behind. Um, do you think a, a dry vapor would be a good approach for that? 
Yeah, I think toys would be an excellent thing because if you use chemicals, you should really wipe them off after you use them on children's toys to make sure they, they don't get ingested in that. So th this does solve that problem, I think. Okay. So that was the second idea that we kind of had as a way to pay for the dry vapor equipment, the investment you're making, is the opportunity to sell add-ons like mattress cleaning or toy cleaning, um, et cetera. But then finally is just it's a lot more efficient, a lot more effective. We already talked about how the chemicals take uh, two to ten minutes to kill germs, but especially when you're dealing with hard-to-reach places like the joints on a toilet around the fixtures on the sink. Um, those are places where it can be hard to get in there and get between the seams. And uh, using a dry vapor technology can kind of blast in there and clean it out more effectively. Well, the natural product claims like vinegar is one that's received a lot of attention. You have to remember any kind of disinfectant, uh, just using that word has to be approved by the Environmental Protection Agency, for example. And if vinegar was effective, it would be sold as a disinfectant. Uh, but it's not effective. While it will kill some organism, it doesn't kill them to the degree where we could call it a disinfectant or useful as a disinfectant product, for example. So that's an issue uh, with using uh, something like vinegar or natural product. You, you really only want to ever use anything that's really approved by the EPA. One of the other things is like natural products like thymol and that can be uh, allergenic. Uh, is the other issue that you deal with. So you have to be careful that you're not allergenic to that or anybody's allergenic to that type of uh, uh, product. So one of the big issues with all natural products are, are two things. There's an added cost to them, of course. Uh, but then you have to worry about, is it allergenic? Will, will certain people be sensitized to it? Uh, well, that's tr true with any chemical disinfectant, too. Now, the most common chemical disinfectant, I believe, is, is a quat sanitizer. Is that right? Yes, uh, quad sanitizer is one of the most common uh, chemicals uh, used as disinfectants household. Uh, they, they are pretty effective, particularly with the right formulations and that. But again, you, you do have to make be conscious of the dwell time for those is really important. Uh, so uh, in, in particularly, if you're going to use those, you got to spray and then wait usually the number of minutes it says on the label. You have to read the label very carefully uh, with those. And some are only uh, effective against certain uh, types of viruses and bacteria. So you should look at those and be aware of that. Yeah. So like I said, one of the big advantages here uh, with the dry vapor technology is also the ability to move faster and get a lot of cleaning done more efficiently. Um, there have been time studies done by cleaning companies I know who use it and have been very happy with uh, that it was at least as fast as, if not faster than using the chemicals. Um, and in some applications, like I said, especially in bathrooms, um, it actually sped them up quite a bit. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, cleaning, we talked a little bit earlier, and I'm not sure if we got into a lot, enough detail. Um, you can buy things that are labeled as steamers in retail a lot of times, um, and they don't work as well. And what's the reason why? Well, you, the important thing is, is to realize with the technology we're talking about, it has been tested against uh, specific microorganisms are concerned and, and the spread in both healthcare and in the home. And I think that's what you want. And that's been documented and published in scientific journals. And so the technology has been well evaluated from a scientific point. We know it's effective. And that's what you want to see with any product. You want to see some testing of its efficacy uh, that's been actually published and documented scientifically. And that's what this product has. And you'd also mentioned to me uh, previously that a lot of the retail machines just don't get to the right temperature, correct? Uh, yeah, that's always a problem. You got to make sure it's the right temperature. It's evenly distributed. I think the most important thing is has it been evaluated and has it been tested against the spectrum of organisms that the dry steam vapor has been. Yep. Well, I mean, there are definitely, I think, some marketing advantages, too, of showing up with a piece of equipment that shows that you're a true professional when you have dry steam vapor machine and a customized toolkit versus showing up with spray bottles or a bottle of vinegar, um, which it looks like anyone can do. Um, and once you have the machine, you know, you don't have to worry uh, about taking care of more chemicals in the future. And there's a lifetime warranty on the boiler in there, which does most of the work, which I know is getting a little on, more on the product side than your side. But I kind of wanted to explain that, you know, a lot of times people are really concerned about making this investment. But once you make it, it does help pay off in time. Um, and you mentioned there's a scientific basis for the claims being made on this technology. Gene, what do you know about the tests that have been run? 
We, well, we've done a, a series of tests uh, in, in another laboratory, too, on the efficacy of this against a broad spectrum of microorganisms uh, that are a concern. I think that's what's really important. Uh, you know, one of the things I should point out about uh, things like dry steam technology, too, is you can kill almost all, you can kill all classes of organisms, basically, uh, with this type of technology. Where <laughs> anytime you're dealing with a chemical technology, there are limitations in dwell times and the types of organisms it can be effective against. Um, and I think that's what, uh, <laughs> excuse me, we're looking for. This will kill viruses and bacteria, which are both the leading causes of uh, infections transmitted in the household in an indoor environment. And I think I think that's really an advantage of it. You um, can kill, and, 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 and the other thing is, well, every time we're faced with a new microorganism being evolving or coming out in the world, every year you read about a new one, a swine flu, bird flu, SARS, uh, Ebola, uh, you can, I think that you can have the confidence that this type of technology will work against those type of organisms without, before any kind of testing is done, uh, because it's the, the standard way these types of organisms can be killed. Now, we spent a lot of time talking about, at least I did, um, how to make this uh, make sense and explain to the customer. What about your employees? What, in the market we're in right now, it's actually more difficult to recruit employees than it is to find clients. Um, so what are some advantages potentially you could, uh, we could offer to the employees using a technology like this um, around you know, fewer chemicals, fewer risks for contamination themselves? Well, you know, just to effectively in uh, disinfectants, two areas. One, because it reduces the amount of allergens. You can reduce the amount of headaches. Let's just use that as an example. Uh, headaches is the most common cause of loss of productivity in a business, believe it or not, and allergies, which people are believed. So you have a potential impact in that area. I think one of the other things, besides the uh, spread of illnesses in the facility, like the common colds uh, is a classical example, but also important, is presenteeism. You know, the average office worker only may miss three or four days uh, a year uh, from illness, but he may go to work, uh, recent studies indicate 50 to 60 days a year, um, not feeling well, feeling sick. Well, that's called presenteeism, going to work when, when you're uh, not feeling well. People don't want to miss work. It's important. Uh, uh, they don't want to use uh, sick daily days, so they come into work all the time. And that is believed now to cost companies as much as a uh, absenteeism, going to work ill, less productive. Uh, a headache can cost a company as much as $500, for example. Uh, going to work ill with a cold can cost a company as much as $280 in lost productivity because you're not as productive as you got a headache, you don't feel well, uh, you're, 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 you're not getting as much work done because if you're, you're not feeling well. Uh, or, or you're not as productive, you're not thinking as well because you're sneezing, you're coughing, you're running, getting Kleenexes. Uh, it, it may seem trivial on a one-to-one -one basis, but on a yearly basis with employees over the year, the lowest productivity can actually is estimated cost the average employer about $1,500 a year, lost productivity from people becoming ill uh, and going to work ill, I should say. So it, it, it has more of an impact. I mean, good hygiene in, in a facility, and that's what we're really talking about, and reducing the amount of allergen exposure. Uh, you're, you're talking uh, about hundreds, if not thousand dollars for the average worker without really realizing if you can reduce uh, that amount of lawless productivity just from being present uh, probably is, is something you don't see um, going on except when some of the work doesn't get done on time. But it's something employers should start thinking about. Any type of impact on hygiene from what we see, reduce, well, give me in studies we've done any just normal using good uh, chemical disinfectants, let's say. We know we can reduce your risk of getting colds and flus by 70 to 80 percent in the office. So that's a substantial savings uh, over a year's time. Well, great. Um, well, I put a link in the comments here so people can see uh, where they can uh, purchase a machine like this, just because I know I'm going to get some questions about it here in a little bit. Now, I want to summarize real quick and just run through um, the ways you can make more money with a piece of equipment like this, um, like the ladybug. The first one is you can sell the cold and flu fighting deep cleaning package, um, you know, really differentiate from your competition. During season, people will definitely pay 
uh, $250, $350, $450 to have their house clean to try to stop that infection from going from person to person to person. Um, I was talking to a, a, a colleague of mine recently who said in her family, someone has been sick constantly for the last three weeks because it just keeps moving around the family and it's hit them all pretty hard as a result. Second idea is you can sell a lot of add-ons, whether it's the allergen reduction and mattress steaming or cleaning the children's toys or uh, other things like that. There's a lot of add-ons you can get from using this type of product. And the third major benefit is just it's more effective. You've got a quicker germ kill claim, so you can move faster, you can get into tight crevices better. And as we talked about, um, reducing the exposure of your customers, or not your customers, your employees, to the chemicals and the fumes and the headaches and the illnesses that cause is also gonna give you a productivity bonus that's hard to measure, like you said, day to day. It's only something you're gonna notice at the end of the year. So those were sort of the three ideas we had on how using uh, the Ladybug system from Advanced Vapor Technologies could help your company be more profitable. Um, I really wanna thank you for coming on. Do you have any final thoughts you'd wanna go over? Uh, you know, I think overall, I, I, I think uh, it, it's underappreciated the importance of uh, good surface hygiene in the home and in the office. Both are in the office. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a good savings for your employees. You know, you, you, you're going to have healthier employees. Yeah, it's going to reduce the, your cost of operation from what we've seen. And in the home, it prevents the, the spread of illnesses in the home as well. Uh, from what we've seen too, uh, and, and that's really important today. Uh, the, you know, we still don't have vaccines for these common illnesses, the cold, uh, diarrhea, many respiratory infections. So this has been type of cleaning and technology has been shown to be very effective in reducing the exposure to, to organisms that can make you ill in the home. Uh, well, great. Well, thank you so much for coming out today. I know you're the expert on this type of stuff. I've actually read at least one of your books. How many have you written on uh, the home environment and staying healthy? Oh, oh we've written about uh, three or four books, yes. Yeah, like I said, Dr. Gerb is definitely the expert, so we really appreciate him being on today, and thank you again.